Well, folks, we're fishing a planer boards today for landlocked Chinook salmon. We're using small crankbaits. We're gonna see if we can put a few salmon in the boat here. Come here, Junior. Let's take a look at you. Let's go, hey, buddy. Nice little Chinook. He's got the heart of a Chinook. He ain't a big dude, but he's fun. Come here, Junior. Fighter. Feisty little dude. Come here, Bubba. Come here, Bubba. There we go. Looks out of your face. Put your pliers away, see? What are you up, bro? Nice little chrome bullet. Beautiful fish. All right, buddy, today's your lucky day. You're gonna go back. All right, Bubba, you ready? Angler's Experience is proudly sponsored by Crestliner, leader by innovation. Setter Rods, the American way. Sidewinder planer boards, fight the fish, not the board. Tobler Marina, your one-stop boat shop. Easy Loader, all boat trailers are not created equal. Oxart, your single source supplier. Lincoln Electric, the welding experts. And Honda Marine, it's all about power. What is the biggest secret in the trolling industry today? The Sidewinder Planer Board. The patented through hole design of the Sidewinder allows you to position your lure into undisturbed water, greatly increasing your ability to catch trout, salmon, steelhead, walleye, and all other game fish. The Sidewinder planer board can be easily deployed from a boat or a riverbank, port or starboard with the use of a single board. With a built-in quick release, you fight the fish, not the board. Have you been looking for a fishing presentation that will work for all species regardless of the situation? Then drop shotting is the technique for you. We are proud to introduce Drop Shot Secrets Revealed. This to this set includes four full length episodes from the angler's experience utilizing the drop shot technique along with two hours of detailed instruction teaching you how to master the drop shot, including segments on gear selection, knot tying, bait selection, and secrets to bait modification. You can get your copy today at axfishing.com or from these other fine retailers. Drop shotting, truly a technique for all occasions. Folks, this board that we're using here today, I tell you, it's something that I feel is probably the biggest secret in the trolling industry. It's called a Sidewinder, and we're going to go over it with you and show you this little board. But I tell you what, it is the most versatile little planer board you're ever going to use. It's simple. It threads through your, your line, threads through it. 
you don't have to mess with hooking and unhooking it when you get a fish on. I'll tell you what, it's the biggest little secret out there in the trolling industry, and I've been trolling for a long time, and this little board is exciting. Sidewinder boards and the little ripping minnow are doing the trick today, folks. Coming at us. Oh yeah, nice one guys. Nice one guys. Good fish. See the old Cultiva ripping minnow green tiger is tearing them up. Nice chunky fish, guys. Man, nice chunky fish. Let's get him in here. Got a mind of his own. Come here, mama. There we go, guys. Nice one. Beautiful fish, guys. He's a beauty. Let's keep him in the net there so we don't hurt him. Look at that, he got both hooks in that Cultiva ripping minnow right in the corner of his mouth. He ate it up. All right, guys, slide that little beauty back. There he goes. All right, tell me that ain't fun, folks, catching them little Chinook, they are fighters. The bait that we're using here today, if you were to go to a tackle shop and look at this bait, the first thing that would come to your mind is that would be a bait that I would use for a crappie or a smallmouth bass. You wouldn't think about using this guy for Chinook. The reason being is it's a little tiny bait right here. Most of the guys out there on this particular lake are trolling herring. They're either cup plugging or putting a helmet on the front of them. And they're anywhere from four to five inches long and they work great. I just don't like to mess with the herring. What this bait is, it's made by Cultiva. It's called a Rip and Minnow, number 65, and it's in a green tiger pattern. And what made me choose this particular lure is these salmon are feeding on small kokanee salmon. And this guy with a dark green back and the silver sides is the best bait that I can find to resemble that kokanee. The other thing that it does is it only goes down about three or four feet. Um, it's got a nice wide wobble to it. And being that it's a smaller bait, and I like to finesse fish, with the bigger baits, what you'll find is the fish will only eat when they're aggressive, when they're in that window of, of feeding. What this smaller bait does is it keeps them active throughout the day. With a smaller presentation, they'll bite whether they're full or they're aggressive. So give that guy a try when you go out Chinook fishing next time, and I think you'll be surprised at what it'll catch. Can't believe how hard these fish pull for how big they are. That's the fun of these ones. And we can go to the Pacific Ocean and catch the big boys, but I tell you what, being local here, just kicking the pants. Nice little fish. Come here, Junior. A little silver bullet. Come here. Come here, Bubba. Get that thing out of your forehead. Come here. Ooh. So what we're doing here, just keep them in the net. Try not to remove too much body slime here. All right, Bubba. Thanks for the battle. I'm gonna do your thing. Most of this board, like right now, we've got a fish on there, and that fish didn't quite hit it hard enough to release it. You don't have any gadgets. All you gotta do is just come right in here, pop it loose, send it down, and it floats on your line just like that. It's very simple, no big awkward board, no heavy weight. You don't have to clip and unclip. It's just kind of like a slip bobber out there. This was a little guy, so he didn't pull the release on it. But it's so simple. See how that board just floats in the water? That fish can pull line freely back and forth when he fights, and there's no distraction from that fish. He's a little bugger here. Grab the net, this is a little guy. But you want to talk about a slick design, this board is a dandy. Come here, Junior. Hey, just a little bugger. 
I'll take them. No, they're all good. Slide him back in there. Make sure we don't hurt him. There you go, buddy. See ya. Folks, one of the things that people do that they make a little bit of a mistake and what it has to deal with is with the wind. And if there's one element that I hate, I hate the wind. It makes boat control hard. You got it whistling through your ear. It's whistling through the microphone. It makes filming real hard. But when we got out here this morning, there was about six or seven boats in this area and it was glassy calm. And we caught a few fish. And then as the wind started to pick up, everybody started to leave because you could tell they're having boat control problems. They go up into the wind and they'd come back with it and they would actually troll with the wind and as they become frustrated they leave and I see it happen with pike fishing I see it happen smallmouth bass fishing and one of the things you got to do is you got to learn to stick it out when the wind blows the winds picked up and with the wind the fishing's picked up and you might say well why does the fishing get better with the wind well there's a couple things what it does it starts moving everything around in the water all your plankton start moving into a certain area your bait fish come in your big fish come in and feed on them the other thing that it does with a bright sky like we have when that water's flat those fish don't want to look up it's just like us if we go to stare into the sun we don't want to do that it hurts our eyes when you get that chop on the water it breaks the light up and it's not reflecting down in a solid beam it's several smaller beams which makes it easier for the fish to see the other thing that it does is it takes those planer boards instead of before where they're just kind of going along at a steady pace, now they're jumping all over the place, jumping up and down, back and forth, and you're putting a lot of action to that plug. So next time when you're out and the wind starts blowing, just grit, bite your teeth and bear it because it's going to get good. Just stick it out. Those fish will start striking when that wind blows. Trust me. Ooh, he's a little bit grumpy. He's a little cranky, guys. Come here, buddy. He is all sorts of angry. That's a nice little thick fish. Come here, Bubba. Nice little chubby. Little chubby little fella. Come here, Junior. All right, man. <laughs> oh, I want a kick in the pants. I want a kick in the pants. Folks, if you want to get kids started, these little Chinook, boy, they get one of these on the end of their pole and they just fight like crazy. It'll give them, it'll get them hooked for life. Come here, you little chubby dude. Got him. Nice chunky little boy right there, guys. Yeah, it's just a gorgeous fish. What a beauty. Look at that little belly on that guy. All right, partner. Let's throw you back in without hurting your hair. Nice chunky little fish. That's too cool. All right, Bubba. See ya. Oh, very nice jump. Little bullet. Come here, buddy. Junior, you got a big old heart on you. Come here. Looks out. A little Coltiva ripping minnow. Doing the trick. Little guy right there. All right, Bubba, let's put you back in the water here. All right. Back home, Junior. They may be small guys, but they fight hard. They're kicking the pants on this light gear. What are the keys to finding these spring Chinook like this? It has to do with the water temperature, and that's the same whether you're fishing for bass, pike, walleye, any of these species in the spring are going to go to the warmest water they can find. The main body of our lake right now is about 38 degrees, 
And what we've done is we've traveled to a few of the tributaries that are flowing into this lake, and we found one in particular that was pushing a lot of water into the lake. We've had a lot of rain lately, and that rainwater is dumping into that river, and it's creating a warm water flow into that lake. Where that river's running in, our water went from 38 degrees to almost 42 degrees. The other thing that it does, by being warmer, it attracts the bait fish. The bait fish are going to get in there and feed on the small insects larvae that are starting to move around. The other thing that happens is there's some mud flowing out of that river. That mud acts like an insulator, just like at nighttime when you have a clear sky, it gets cold. At nighttime, if you have cloud cover, it stays warmer. Same thing works with this mud. The mud is only down about three or four feet below the surface and it's insulating that water that's coming in and it's keeping it warm. So we found this warmer water, we found this mud, and what we're doing is we're trolling the edge of that mud line where the river's pushing in and those salmon are just coming up underneath those bait fish and they're feeding on them. And that's why fishing the surface with these small plugs in that warm water is producing for us. Fish, fish, fish! That's the one we've been waiting for, guys. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> That's a big fish, guys. Holy smokes, I can't even stop him yet. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is a big one, boys. This is a big one. Man, he is out there forever and a day. Three hundred fifteen feet out, guys. We started with about hundred and twenty. He's taking two hundred feet of line out there, and he's still going. This fish is a beast. I saw him jump once. We're gonna have to take a second. I'm gonna have Mickey help me clear the lines, guys, and then we're gonna get on top of this fish. Got to be careful with him here, guys. He's up here next to the surface. Oh, there he goes. Nice jump. Nice jump. Oh man. Look at that one, folks. For this lake, guys, this is a nice fish. Uh -huh. <laughs> you jump, buddy. Oh, Bubba, I'm just going to show you off to the TV. We got him hooked up underneath the chin there too. That plug got crossed up and that's really making him pull hard on top of being a nice fish. Right there guys, that one there is hefty. Nice fish, beauty. That's a beauty guys. That there will make my day. What a beautiful, beautiful Chinook right there, guys. Sidewinder planter boards are getting her done today, folks. Got that plug right there. Swung underneath his chin. He got the bottom plug up in his mouth here, and then when it swung across under his chin, it made him pull even twice as hard. Pop that one out. Okay. There we go. Look at that, guys. An absolute beauty. He'll probably go about nine pounds, somewhere in that neighborhood. What a beauty. All right, let's turn this big guy loose. Let's get him back in the water here. Thanks for the fight, Bubba. A little powerful fish like that, pull that much line, that's amazing. Gonna get his breath here. Pumping his gills good. Come on, Bubba. You ready? Send you off.
What is the biggest secret in the trolling industry today? The Sidewinder Planner Board. The patented through-hole design of the Sidewinder allows you to position your lure into undisturbed water, greatly increasing your ability to catch trout, salmon, steelhead, walleye, and all other game fish. The Sidewinder Planner Board can be easily deployed from a boat or a riverbank, port or starboard, with the use of a single board. With the built-in quick release, you fight the fish, not the board. Folks, I want to show you a little trick here when you're letting this line out through your board because your line travels through the board. What I like to do is I just take and pinch the board in my fingers like that. We're using counter reels and I'm going back 55 feet. So what you do is you just pinch it here and you simply just pull the line out the back like so until you get to where you're 55 feet out the back. Okay, now that you're at 55 feet, it's simple to rig it. All I'll do, take this line right here, hook it into my release, like so, put my bill up, send it out the side, like so, and then what we've been doing is we've been going out to the side about 90 feet, so 55 behind the board, 90 out the back, for a total of about 145 on your counter, and that's it, it's as simple as that. Works like a champ. If you look at sunset, can't beat that. Or did its job again. Not a bad one, guys. Nice and chubby one trying to jump into the motor. Look at him pulling line, he's all mad now. He was just coming at us, trying to trick us. Come here, bud. Got that ripping bit onto the chin again. There we go. All right, what a day. What a day. That'll cure cabin fever. Look at that, guys. He broke that back hook off of that bait right there. Hold her loose. Well, folks, I tell you what, these chrome beauties, they are something to play with. They fight hard for a fish of that size. I tell you what, they're kicking the pants. I encourage you folks to get out there, get one of those Sidewinder planer boards, some of those ripping minnows, get out to your local lake, catch some of these landlocks, you know. All right, buddy. See you later. I'll see you folks next week. For a list of today's gear and techniques, log on to axfishing.com and select AX Journals.